We'll start by creating a simple plus button that transforms into an input card. Once we have that in place, we'll move on to the color selection, where each choice animates into view and becomes part of the story. Let's break this down step by step. A rounded rectangle appears, and we mark it with match geometry effect, so SwiftUI knows the shape is the same one, even if it changes its size or position later. And we add yellow color. Oh, wait a second, what is lighter? It's just a small function. It takes the original color and makes it a bit brighter, giving the surface a softer look. Finally, a shadow slips in, shifted slightly down and to the right, lifting the rectangle gently off the background. Now we know how to move the rectangle, but that alone isn't enough. What if we want to add more elements and make them move with the rectangle like they truly belong to it? On top of the rectangle, we place a text editor anchored to the top left. It's sized to fit neatly inside with a little padding so the text has room to breathe. The background is hidden, so the rectangle's color still shows through, and we only show the editor when this view appears. On top of the editor, we place a placeholder that only shows when the text is empty, and we give it the same match geometry effect so it can move smoothly with the rectangle, and its opacity follows show text, fading in and out when needed. Then we add a plus icon. It's styled in black, but for now, it stays invisible with opacity set to zero. We still give it the same match geometry effect, so when the view changes, it connects seamlessly to its counterpart. We do the same thing again with the plus view, but here's the twist. The placeholder disappears, and instead, the plus icon takes the stage. So when we move between the two views, it feels like the text fades away and the plus grows right in its place. Now it's time to create the color selection. When we open the colors, each one is pushed upward by 55. But they don't all move the same. We multiply that by the index, so the first rises a little, the second rises more, and together they stack into place. Each color doesn't move at once. Instead, we add a small delay, so the first goes, then the next, then the next, one by one, in order. When we choose a color, we highlight it with a white border so it stands out. Then it spins with a smooth 180 degrees. And after that, the palette closes as each button moves back to the top one by one. 